The 2017 World Masters Games in Auckland were widely regarded as a huge success and branded by many as the best Masters Games ever. New Zealand's largest city, Auckland, provided the perfect backdrop, facilities and a sport-loving culture for this massive global sporting event. Hopefully it inspires people to get out of their armchair and say, actually, I could do that. Held every four years, it follows the Olympic model, with medals and an opening and closing ceremony, with one key difference. You don't have to be an elite athlete. And in most sports, you don't even need to qualify. If you're 35 and over, you're a master except for swimming, where 25 is old enough. I'll just go out and do the best I can. 28,000 athletes competed in 28 different sports across 48 venues in and around Auckland. It was quite simply a huge multi-sport event, with countless stories which inspired audiences all around the world. Olympic athletes coming out of retirement, great teams reunited, competitors in their 90s and even over 100 breaking world records. But above all, this was a Games that celebrated the joy and friendships which come with playing sport. And it all kicked off with a dramatic opening ceremony at New Zealand's premier stadium, Eden Park. Welcome to you, the 28,000 competitors from 100 different countries. You are what make these games such a special occasion. So the stage was set and it was time now for the athletes to shine. There were many inspiring performances by individuals at Auckland 2017. For many though, the Games will be remembered for one remarkable Indian lady. The gun to start the women's 100 metres ushered in the new star of these World Masters Games, 101-year-old Mankur from India. <laughs> She is very happy being here and she feels like everybody is a, her son. Running into games history and instant celebrity, in a time of 74 seconds, this tiny woman from Punjab then disappearing under a scrum of media and fans. <laughs> She brings the happiness in there. She runs, she walks, she cooking. You know, she's just full of joy. And her joy was plain to see when she received her gold medal from Masters Games board member and pole vault legend, Sergei Bubka. Until she's alive, until there's a life, she's going to keep rocking. She's rocking, running, she will she keep running, on she running, running, she will never give up. She's never going to give up. She's an Indian bold lady. <laughs> this bold lady from India, who only started running at 94, believes she still has plenty more to offer. She is going to run again. She's not going to give up. Whatever may lie ahead for this remarkable athlete, she's now happy to bask in the golden glow. New Zealand's oldest competitor at the 2017 Masters Games, Reg Rye, was looking to become the country's newest cycling world champion. And the odds were looking good for the 94-year-old, who was the only competitor in his age group for the 2,000-metre individual pursuit. Just to go out and uh, I'm finished. Eight laps, 
when you're 95, there's a hell of a long way. Yeah, I'll just go out and do the best I can. Reg has come back from cancer, a heart attack, and the loss of his wife of 64 years, and is living life to the full. As well as taking up cycling three years ago, he's also skydiving and learning to fly. Well, I've always been a fit joker. I've been a farmer, and I've done track um, athletics. But I, I find cycling um, easy. Walking kills me. And the supporters were out in force at the Avanti Drome in Cambridge, and they weren't disappointed. Red Rye recording the ride of his life, a gold medal, and the unofficial world record time. It feels pretty bloody good. It... And Reg is showing no signs of slowing down. My coach wants me to carry on training, but in a different manner. And when, when I'm ready, we will be going for a one-hour world record around the velodrome. A lot of youngsters and a lot of elderly people can look at Reg and say, sure, but I can do it. If he can do it, I can do it. And that's Reg's attitude and that. And the Frenchman, Robert, that's got the hour record, be aware, Reg is on his way. So another inspirational performance by a remarkable athlete at the 2017 Masters Games. More than 20 years after winning six medals at the Atlanta Paralympics, inspirational New Zealand swimmer Dwayne Cale is back competing at the age of 49. You know, you watch the Olympics and, and people are in awe of performance. Um, you watch an event like this and as you say in the, you know, the 40, 50, 60 year old age group, hopefully it inspires people to get out of their armchair and say, actually I could do that. You know, and, and you don't have to put a lot of effort in to get prepared and ready for an event like this. And, the people you meet and the experiences are just enormous. After four golds, a silver and a bronze in the 96 games, he continued to champion the Paralympian cause as the New Zealand chef de mission and now as a board member of the International Paralympic Committee. I think as time goes on, I've got to experience just what Paralympic sport actually does for society and you know, how it can lead to social change and inclusion. And you know, that, that's better for the whole economy and you know, our country and globally. And in the 50 metres freestyle, Dwayne Cale wanted to see if he still had any of the speed that made him a Kiwi Paralympian legend. I can proudly say I am an athlete again um, and yeah, in, in the next hour or so um, we'll just see how close I am to the days of old. Well 21 years on, Dwayne was only four seconds off his personal best and remarkably just inside the qualifying time for the recent Rio Games. Yeah, that wasn't bad, actually. Another great Masters champion and a great ambassador for the 2017 Games. You forget your preconceptions about the Masters Games when you meet Brinley Baxter. At 25 years of age, she's one of the youngest competitors at the Games because for swimming, Masters starts when you turn 25. Um, it was actually my coach um, at the beginning of last year. He's like, give this a go. I'm like, yeah, why not? Gives me something to work towards, so... Yeah. Masters is a way to stay in competitive sport for an Aussie battler who loves the pool and spent 15 years trying to make it. I suppose you could say I put in 100% effort and then I go that bit extra, but sometimes it gets me there, sometimes it doesn't, I just fall short. But that's why I thought, may as well give this a go, give me a chance to prove that I can do something. While Brinley never quite got to the top, Kiwi Rebecca Perrett did, winning gold as a teenager at the 1978 Commonwealth Games today winning again at the age of 56. You can set your own personal goals so even though you compete against other people you still you know you can still do PBs and things so I think you know it's something everyone should should give it give a go and there's always a sport for someone so yeah it's it's great. Comebacks, second chances and setting new records. Weightlifting had it all. It's her first major event. 35-year-old American Christy Brewer wins the gold in the 63 kg weightlifting. Not bad for someone who only started just over a year and a half ago. <laughs> and you're a world champion. How does that feel? I am. Um, it feels amazing. So that's what we came for. We came for. We wanted to break some records, and we wanted to um, come home with the gold. So we did. That was our goal. I've only been, um, actually been weightlifting for about 20 months, so less than two years. Um, so f to me it's still fun, like I'm still, uh, I'm still learning, I'm still like getting comfortable with the movements. Well Christy Brewer edged out American rival Gwendolyn Sisto who won the snatch, 
but was outmuscled in the clean and jerk. Silver not a bad return though for an athlete who missed out on her Olympic dream with injury and was thrown a second chance at the 2017 Masters Games. Coming back from a terrible near career ending injury and I actually went down a weight class for this meet so I, I knew I had to get some good snatches in. The clean and jerk was a gamble. We thought it would be safer just to get in a light clean and jerk. Um, especially after seeing how the snatches went. The clean jerks were really easy. In some point of view, I, I kind of feel like I left a little bit on the table, but you know, it's, uh, it's about game theory. You have to, so may, may, I got the snatch world record, she got the clean and jerk world record. And the Masters Games have also given 35-year-old USA competitor Jacqueline Joyce a second chance. I've struggled with alcoholism and addiction my whole life. I've been sober now for two and a half years. I started off doing CrossFit two years ago and then I picked up a barbell about a year ago and I started Olympic weightlifting and it's literally changed my life. I mean the friends I've met, the goals I've been able to accomplish and just how it makes me feel about myself, it's just amazing. The combined weight across two lifts from first the snatch and then the clean and jerk determined the winner in each age group and each weight category and it's a sport which requires strong mental as well as physical strength. Like I step onto this platform and I'm so focused that I only see, like I feel the bar and I see my focal point and I don't hear or see anything else. Weightlifting is a lot like martial arts where you just, you don't think about it, right? So it's just getting myself in the same position every time. So that's all I'm focused on. And then I tell myself the weight is lighter than it actually is. If you get it right, like New Zealander Jade Younger in the 58 kg weight division, you end up with a games record and a gold medal. I pushed it to a max and just going to give it 100% and I did and I got it so yeah I was really wrapped with that. Golden moments in a games where athletes of all ages and backgrounds are exceeding their expectations. Coming up after the break, Olympic legends and great comebacks including Sir Peter Snell and Rob Waddell. It's 25 years since Rex Seller's final Olympic Games, but the 66-year-old is back, racing at the front of the fleet in a wetter trimaran. The gold medalist at Los Angeles in 1984, who followed up with silver at the Seoul Olympics, is still as driven as ever. Oh, it's always the same, it's always the winning. I'm not going out there to make the numbers up. <laughs> How competitive are you? Well, you know, I think you know <laughs> how competitive I am. But uh, as I said, uh, you know, I like to go out there, train as hard as I can and do the best I can. Sentiment shared by Paralympic sailor Chris Sharp. The 58-year-old out of his wheelchair and into a wetter as soon as he returned from Rio, and he's never been so excited sailing. It's put an ear-to-ear -ear grin on my face every single day since I came back from the Games. I look at this thing and I go, it's 30 knots, it's 5 knots, whatever it is, I'm going out there to just to have so much fun. Likewise, 78-year-old Mary Ray, a veteran of the Rome Olympics in 1960 and racing now with his 55-year-old son Tony, an America's Cup winner with Team New Zealand. It's uh, just it's another dream. I mean, I've had a lot of uh, wonderful um, sailing experiences over the years, but this is just something exceptional, sailing with your son. Hopefully I'm not just going to start you know, yelling and screaming at Dad when the <laughs> pressure comes on. We're competitive, mate. We'll be a race to the bar at the end of the day, too. <laughs> I don't know about that. In the laser class, 45-year-old Scott Leith is the man to beat the reigning World Masters champion, winning six titles in the last seven years, and hungry for more. I think, yeah, just the same friends go through each, each uh, year, the last ten years. Um, everyone's aged up with me as well, so uh, it's really good to try and uh, have bragging rights for another year. And while simply taking part is important, for a former America's Cup sailor like 48-year-old Aussie Adam Bischel, the competitive fire still burns. The competition, you know, the competitor inside you is always pretty uh, in there firing, trying to get out of there sort of thing and go out and mix it up and see, see, see where you stand. Peter Lester won his first world championship a few miles down the coast at Takapuna in 1977. Now 61, he's still competitive but also more philosophical. 
I really believe in these sort of events. I think it's great that people get off their backsides, get out there and, and be active. Auckland are calling up church, a classic case in point. The 70-year-old sailing with wife Cynthia as part of a life-affirming challenge. Well, I had some uh, major life-saving surgery about four months ago and I decided that one uh, incentive for me to get my fitness back was to have a goal so I decided to sign up for something that terrified me which was sailing competitively in the World Masters game. So here I am, I think I've achieved the start line and if I can achieve the finish line that'll be a wonderful conclusion. And another master that took themselves out of their comfort zone and picked a new event was Sir Peter Snell. More than half a century on from his glory days as New Zealand's greatest middle distance runner, Sir Peter Snell is still competing. Just at a different sport and at a different pace. I was unable to do anything too energetic due to my heart problems. Uh, I couldn't, for example, play squash or racquetball. Uh, table tennis was a possibility. And uh, I've grown to really think it's a, it's a really fun game to play. I enjoy playing it. It may be fun, but it's also the challenge the 77-year-old three-time Olympic gold medalist was looking for. I've always approached an Olympic event, said I've done all the training and all I have to concentrate on is doing my best on the day and hopefully that's going to be good enough. Playing table tennis, there's all sorts of things that, that can screw you up mentally that you have to overcome. Your temptation to finish the point off too quickly or, or being too tentative. The sign of someone who's used to winning and who still likes to win. I like competitive activities. I don't have to win all the time and it doesn't happen that much, but <laughs> we always, it's good to try. Sporting greats competing shoulder to shoulder with weekend warriors. One of the great themes of this 2017 Masters Games. And the ocean swim was no different. With Auckland's iconic landmark of Rangitoto Island as a dramatic backdrop, the open water swimmers are under starters' orders and then off. An 87-year-old competitor putting it all into perspective. Just being there, it's nature, doesn't cost me a penny. I mean, to have all this. Sydney Salek is a lifelong swimmer and surf lifesaver from Mount Monganui on the North Island's east coast, competing in the 2.5k swim. You can have your fast cars and your speedboats and all the nonsense, but nature's out there for everybody, for absolutely zilt. At the other end of the age spectrum is 35-year-old Moss Burmester, the former world butterfly champion and Olympian drawn back into competition for the first time in seven years. It was the event, you know, it was having the World Masters Games on home turf and I knew how big the event would be and, you know, 28,000 athletes, it's almost three times the size of the Olympics, so I knew it would be an amazing event and I just thought I'd got to be part of that. The 946 competitors in the open swim off Takapuna Beach on Auckland's North Shore have a correspondingly wide variety of reasons for taking part. For 56-year-old Christine Lambert from Whangarei in Northland, it's the feeling of well-being, the health benefits and the camaraderie. They're the most wonderful, friendliest people and it makes you get out of bed, jump into your wetsuit and into the ocean and then you just feel as though you've achieved something and it makes your week, your working week, you know, the humdrum of life just makes you feel all that much more special. That feel-good factor drawing almost a thousand swimmers from 56 countries. What's it left you feeling? Elated. Absolutely elated. Champion. It was hard work because it's two and a half K and you're trying to push yourself, so it's still hard work, but fun. Satisfied with third? Um, never. Likewise, former world champion sailor Mark Orums, who had to settle for bronze after a week racing in the sailing event at Torbay before turning up for the 5K swim. The Games ambassador well satisfied by what he's experienced. For me, it's just been a, a real sense of pride, I think. A sense of pride in my little Torbay Sailing Club and uh, New Zealanders hosting a world-class event again and doing it in a real Kiwi way, really friendly, welcoming, uh, and everybody I've talked to has just had a great time and can't say enough good things about New Zealand and about the Games. So the comments of the oldest male medal winners would have been music to his ears. Our friends have taken us around everywhere. We've seen it in the last six weeks, we've seen a great deal. And I must say, we love not only the country, we love the people. We find the people are so friendly, uh, so helpful, uh, it's al almost embarrassing.
for the 85 to 89 male age group. The silver medal from New Zealand, Sydney Salak. Come on up, Sydney. And ladies and gentlemen, winning the gold medal from Guernsey and Alderney with a brilliant time of 55-36, Michael Banfield. Come on up, Michael. Mike Banfield and Sydney Salak reigniting a rivalry that began in Christchurch 15 years ago. Another gift from God, isn't it? <laughs> really, fantastic. The final salute, the Sky Boat Song, piped by Neil Marriott for 58-year-old Janice Crampton completing the 5K swim. Auntie Janice waving her thanks. The road cycling time trial is 10 kilometres out and 10 kilometres back along Auckland's picturesque waterfront. The atmosphere and the competition stirring on Aussie Greg Best in the para-sport event 20 years after he was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. We decided right at the very beginning that I would try and stay as active as I possibly could. Uh, I was still playing football up until a couple of years ago. Uh, as I say, the cycling has been really good because there's no pressure on my uh, ankles and knees which have deteriorated considerably as well, so I'm really enjoying the cycling. Enjoyment and also therapy, with Greg's body now lacking the muscle strength for other sports. I get fatigued quite a lot as well. As the body heats up, uh, so the muscles fatigue more, so in hot weather especially, or when I'm exercising, my energy level certainly goes down with that as well. So that's something I've had to learn to cope with too. And now he has a memory for the rest of his life as well. People ask me, why are you doing it? And I just say to them, of course I can. Coming up, plenty more action on the water with rowing, surf ski and a star-studded triathlon. The weather turned on an amazing Anzac day on Takapuna Beach and it was a big day for Bruce Moller in the over 55 surf ski. The 1.5k race off Auckland's North Shore is an individual event but it's a family affair for this Kiwi who now lives in Sydney after his brothers got him into paddling. I was basically a bit of a wreck, I'd uh, hurt my back, I'd had two operations and Gary and Gordon actually were the ones who talked me into taking up kayaking so I could join their multi-sport team. Today the family was hoping to see Bruce on the podium after Gary won gold in the mountain bike and Gordon took out his age group in the half marathon. Uh, probably too good a start, I probably went out a bit fast and, and got a bit confident uh, so I tended to die in the last uh, few K and got passed by, by a number of guys so I think I'm out of the medals for uh, the Moller family. But it's not just about the results because for the first time in a long time, all six Moller siblings are together. It's really good to uh, all get together like this. So uh, we've got the, the whole lot together, so all six of us. So we've got two from the US and two from Australia and two still back here in New Zealand. So, so uh, we don't often get all together, so it's great. I'm so pleased to see my brothers out here. They used to come out and watch me and cheer me on, and so I get to return the favour now. Sister Lorraine is an Olympic bronze medalist in the marathon and a Kiwi athletics icon. Now living in the States, sport is something she says the family's always done. New Zealand, you know, it's just conducive to the great outdoors and my dad was always getting us out. My mother wouldn't let us in the door if the sun was shining. And being in a big family, we were competitive with each other. And supportive of each other, especially when there's a great excuse to come home to New Zealand. It's absolutely just amazing. I'm just standing here with my feet on New Zealand sand. Oh, it just feels so good. And you feel there are more good times ahead for the Moller family. The games were blessed with great weather pretty much throughout, making the rowing venue at Lake Carapero look spectacular. Olympic medalist Nathan Twaddle was proof though that pedigree was no guarantee of success. Bronze in Beijing in 2008 in the Coxler's pairs, but not so in the 2017 Masters Games. He made the finals but not the podium, while in the Coxler's fours his crew didn't even manage to make the start line. Yeah, I, I think I was 13 the last time I, I didn't make it to the start of a race, so uh, yeah, 
pretty disappointing not to, but at, at the same time, uh, it does show that you're never too old to relearn some lessons, I think. Luckily, Twaddle and his Auckland crew were thrown a lifeline and allowed to compete in the finals, setting up a clash with Rob Waddell. The gold medalist from Sydney had already beaten Twaddle earlier in the week, claiming gold with his Waikato team in the eights. I've, I've been quite su you know, surprised, I guess, you overlook it, but we won the eights race yesterday and a, a number of people texting and emailing saying, yeah, well done on being a world champion. I thought, oh, it actually feels quite good. <laughs> so I'll take it. <laughs> it's nice. So, yeah, it's, uh, it, it, the stand is still high and, uh, you know, you're fooling yourself if you think you can do nothing and turn up. You still have to, uh, still have to be pretty fit. Sailor, rugby player and now New Zealand Olympic chef de mission, Rob Waddell cruised through to the finals of the Coxless Fours in a sport that has given him his greatest success and the Olympic and World Single Skulls champion was loving being back in the boat. I think the things I've enjoyed has been uh, the sensation of racing and the boat actually feel, still feels quite good. It hasn't, you know, it's only a thousand metres and not two thousand. I think if it was two thousand we'd fall to bits properly but a thousand metres you can still have a a pretty nice race, so that's been fun. In the finals, the ever competitive Rob Waddell picked up his second gold of the games, with Nathan Twaddle's crew coming in fifth. Reunions in the single are a bit lonely, really, so it's nice to get together with what was a really special and important part of my life and my rowing career was with Waikato Rowing Club. And Waddell and Twaddle weren't the only Olympians on show, and it was a case of third time lucky for 57 year old Eric Verdonk, the Kiwi Olympic bronze medalist finally making it to the Masters after two setbacks. 2009, I broke a finger two weeks before the event. And then in 2013, 14, then one of the guys broke, he tore a hamstring, so we, we, were, we were excluded. And so basically it's been an eight year uh, program to get to this point. The Olympic bronze medalist in the single skulls in Seoul in 88, enjoying gold here at Lake Karapiro with his West End crew in the Coxed Fours. For me, I mean, I like to win, of course, uh, but I, and I, and I row to win, but I also row for the, for the, uh, for the companionship. Great weather, great rivalries, great comebacks at the 2017 Masters Games. And rain or shine, the great stories just kept coming. After a week of glorious weather, grim conditions greeted competitors in the triathlon off St Helier's on Auckland's waterfront. But a stiff onshore breeze and driving rain couldn't dampen the spirits of the hundreds of athletes competing in a dozen age groups from 30 to 84, including former New Zealand cricket star Mark Richardson, the 45-year-old facing a 750-metre swim, a 25k bike ride and a 5k run. For you, what's going to be the hardest part today? The swim, hands down. I, I swim like a set of car keys, pretty much. Um, I don't ride particularly well. I've got pretty uh, little pins. The running used to be my strength. Uh, but I don't do much running any longer, so uh, it'll definitely be the swim though, but it's all going to be tough. World Games Ambassador Jenny May Clarkson would agree, the former New Zealand netballer apprehensive ahead of her swim to say the least. I'm very nervous and the reason I'm very nervous is, apart from my fear of open water, it is the lack of training. <laughs> Twin boys have just turned one who don't sleep, <laughs> which means that I don't have time to train. Yeah. I'm kicking myself right now. How nervous are you for her? No, I'm, uh, not at all. No, I, I, she's just got that humility that's there, but I know that competitiveness will kick in once, she, once the start goes off, so she'll be fine. She'll be sweet as. Jenny May competing alongside fellow Games Ambassador Anthony Moss, the US-based 52-year-old who won an Olympic bronze medal in the Butterfly in 1988, sprinting around the boys and revelling in the role of showing off his homeland. Oh, it's extraordinary. I mean, I, I live in San Francisco, so coming home and seeing Auckland shine as it has, you know, literally and figuratively with the weather, um, has been extraordinary. And I've got a bunch of friends who come down from the US to enjoy this, and they'll go off and enjoy the rest of the country, which is exactly what we want people to do. Jenny May taking slightly longer to complete the swim but enjoying the glow of satisfaction after being out of her comfort zone. I'm all about pushing the boat out, I'm all about doing things that scare you a little bit, that get the adrenaline going and it's such a wonderful event to be a part of. What makes it worth it? This feeling, this feeling of going I did it, I've done something that was challenging, I've done something that I was a bit afraid to do and it's that feeling that you get afterwards.
Mark Richardson also enjoying the feel-good factor, buoyed by the enthusiasm of the crowds lining the route. Now they talk about getting a glow of satisfaction. Are you glowing? Yeah, it was a good rush actually, just running, running through here um, and, and running back. There was so much support, it did, it gave me a really big lift, you know. Some of the most vocal support came from one of the game's primary sponsors. 81-year-old Garth Barford has competed in hundreds of triathlons, but his plans to secure gold at his home event were thwarted by his arch-rival from Russia. I can tell you that that was a race for the gold medal. Boris Kirilov just getting there ahead of Garth, a silver medal for Garth Barford. The Russian also Garth's house guest during the Games. I was, didn't know what to do at the beginning of the race, uh, beat my rival or be a good host and let him win. But when <laughs> he's a good Russian, you know, he knows how to rush. <laughs> I had him in my sights, but I just couldn't do it. He kept on looking back. I could see he was uh, worried, but he got there. So congratulations, Boris. The rivalry far from over. The Kiwi reckons he's closing the gap. Probably we'll meet in the World Championships in Rotterdam in September. So I've just got to knock a few seconds off and I'll be the world champion. No age limit on ambition. Coming up after the break, we are on court for success with badminton, basketball and an emotional reunion in the netball. Anzac Day was observed across all the venues at the 2017 Masters Games and it was fitting that New Zealand would play Australia in the over 35s basketball. The competitive juices kicked in at the North Shore Event Centre. Yeah, always nice to make a couple. I missed a, I missed a few too, but you know, I, I love the game, mate, and it's just great to get out there and play alongside Phil Jones, who we used to play together. 43 year old Tall Blacks legend Phil Jones draining them from outside just like he always did. Once I get on the court, you know, it's still there, uh, even though the body's probably screaming a bit now. Um, but yeah, it's just a, you know, a fun environment. Uh, after being away to a few uh, other big tournaments around the world, it, it's nice to be involved in this type of thing. The Kiwis are out to a fast start. <laughs> but up against the experience and size of the Aussies, including former NBA star Chris Anstey, they eventually ran out of gas and the Aussies took the win. I love getting back in this arena and, and, and being competitive and, and actually competing. And the, the guys who had a little bit of juice played some minutes and oftentimes it's the slightly younger guys that, uh, that provide that. But uh, I, I guess we just make a, you know, better decisions when the game's on the line and that just comes through 20 odd years of basketball experience from each, from each player. Looking at the experience on show on the next court, there's a feeling of perspective. I'm going to be 65 one day, not too far away, and you know, to see those guys, they still have a passion for the game. And knowing that there's an arena where they can play and uh, do these kind of things is fantastic. So I say you're never too old, and as long as you're getting up and down and enjoying yourself, I think that's the most important thing. We just hope that we're doing this in another you know, 30, you know, 20 or 30 years, because they seem like they're having a great time. And for us, it's, you know, we're off to the beach now, we'll go sit at a bar and tell old stories tonight, and we'll get some sleep before the And that's what it's about, you know, spending time with your old mates, making new mates, and just letting sport bring people together. And that's just what happened on Auckland's North Shore. There were 250 teams competing for volleyball honours at the 2017 Masters Games, and the biggest and arguably most dominant was the over 55 men's American team, made up of the best players from all around the country. We've got uh, six guys over 6'6". Six, six. Uh, I think 6'9 is our tallest. Some of these guys probably could have played in the basketball division, but uh, we're the United States champions, so we come from all over the USA to come together to play in this World Masters event. And I'll tell you, we're so impressed with the people, the beauty of your country, truly impressive, and we're, we're very pleased to be here and be part of this wonderful event. If the Americans were strong contenders for team of the tournament, match of the week had to be the New Zealand Slobs, or Southern League All Boys, and their titanic battle with Brazil. The Kiwi over 45s coming back from match point down to win a three-set semi-final thriller. 
lot of us in that group, I think eight of us, all won the national titles here 20, 20 years ago. So 95, 96, we were New Zealand champions. A lot of the guys played for New Zealand for 10 years. I'm actually an international referee that's been to the Olympic Games as a referee, so I get to ref the top players in the world. Um, but to actually play in that sort of moment is just something you'd never forget. Yeah! All those athletes talk about being in the moment. We're in the moment, but we're old and past it. So uh, we, we just ride with it. With the aches and pains are hurting all the time. And then you don't feel it. There's a moment in time, you're like riding on the clouds and all you can do is play this game that we all love. And uh, for a moment there, we're all doing it really well. And there was another semi-final win for the host nation on the next court. The New Zealand women's over 35s team, also packed with former internationals, beating the Canadians two sets to one to book their place in the final. Yeah, it's a great event. I mean, coming into the tournament, not sure the standard of the teams and who's going to be here, but that's what we want to do, come and play some great games. And, you know, that was, you know, a good high standard of volleyball and it's been happening throughout the tournament. So, yeah, it's a really great standard. So plenty of excitement in West Auckland and plenty of success for New Zealand. Experience is, of course, a common ingredient for success at Auckland 2017. At these games, there are masters, and then there are masters like Andy Gow and Bob Cook. These American badminton players have been to every game since the very beginning, and they've got the t-shirts to prove it. I think it's just because I love playing with Andy so much. We've had so much fun together, so many tight matches, lost a few, won most of them though, fortunately, and it's just been a pleasure playing with them. We work out really well. We know where we're supposed to be at all times. And I think he's just a great partner for that. Yeah. Ironically, these close friends started out as rivals on the court at university in California. We used to be very competitive and we used to play against each other. So I, I think we kind of appreciate it more when we get together because I know how competitive he is. <laughs> so, so I know I can rely on him, you know, even when I'm, I'm out of position. Yeah. They're now positioned in the over 70s event and they've noticed plenty of change over the last 30 odd years. Uh, a lot more participants and the game gets very, very competitive. The competition is what keeps them coming back. They love winning. Well, I, all I'm concentrating on is winning the team competition. That's our main goal every four years is win the team competition. Usually after the team competition, we're beat. And so we're playing a lot of people that haven't been in team competition. And so it's very difficult, especially if we get to the finals, because we're usually, you know, out of gas. And then, of course, there's the memories they create. I think just have fun. I, I think that's, uh, all the, that's all the game is about, you know, just having fun and meeting a lot of people. And we, along the, you know, all the years that we played, we, we met so many great, pe great people. Yeah, so, so we enjoyed that a lot. Yeah. They're creating new memories in Auckland and hopefully adding more gold to their sleeves. There was a fitting tribute to the late Tanya Dalton at the women's netball. Several former teammates got together and played in honour of the former Silver Fern, who tragically died three months ago. Oh my gosh, driving here I was tears all the way, cried all the way just thinking it's not going to be the same. Dalton was set to play alongside her old college rifles teammates under the name Masters of the Universe. The team renamed themselves Teabags, taking on Dalton's nickname. Dalton's husband and children proudly watched on. Sometimes the world doesn't make sense but yeah she, she would have been here, she would have been giggling, she would have been running around, uh, had that cheeky grin on her face uh, and thoroughly enjoyed it. On court the tea bags proved way too strong for the opposition, the former Silver Ferns and Auckland reps rediscovering some old moves as well as some old aches and pains. Netball was the last game I wanted to play at Masters, I mean geez I've done 30 minutes already and I'm like oh my Achilles, oh. but um, it just takes on a whole new meaning when you're playing for someone. Tanya's always in our minds, I've done a few layups for her trying to you know um, do it the way she did but I yeah, couldn't match her. Sideline, they were raising money for the Tanya Dalton Foundation, which helps young women from challenge backgrounds. There are going to be lots of memories shared of, of the last sort of 20 years that, that we all knew Tans, and you know, it'll be a nice week to make some new ones. Old friends and new ones, another great theme from the 2017 Masters Games.
Hundreds were queuing at the doors for the closing ceremony of the 2017 Masters Games. The cloud on Auckland's Queen's Wharf was packed to watch the curtain come down on a hugely successful event. In fact, Auckland has set a new standard in the world's largest multi-sport games. Together, you have made the World Masters Games 2017 the best games ever. Can you name one thing that wasn't perfect? I haven't heard anything about that. That's why they are the best games ever. This final party marks the end of 10 days of competition in which 28,000 competitors have battled it out in 28 sports across 48 venues. Former legends and Olympians have competed shoulder to shoulder with amateurs. Records have been broken with a 101-year-old sprinter, a 95-year-old track cyclist and countless other performances which have inspired and moved audiences all over the world. Incredibly proud when you spend four and a half years working towards the dream of 25,000 athletes coming from over 100 different countries and then this evening to hear the president of the International Masters Games Association declare our games the best games ever, it doesn't get much better than that. Indeed, plenty for Auckland to be proud of as they pass the baton on to the next hosts, Kansai in Japan 2021. This Hoi Waka will be gifted by Fao Tapu, presented to Shosuka Mori of the WMG 2021 Kansai. Japan by members of Ngati Whātua here on stage with us tonight as a symbol of the relationship between the people of Tāmaki Makoto, Auckland and Kansai, Japan. The bar has been set high for Japan in four years' time, and thanks to Auckland 2017, the Masters Games brand has never been stronger.